Welcome to the National Gallery in VR 180. You can watch this using a VR headset or a cardboard, but if you don't have either, don't worry. If you're on mobile, you can move your phone around, or if you're on desktop, click around to see more of this incredible space. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Emma McFarland and I'm Innovation Lab Manager here at the National Gallery. Now you're watching the first of four videos in which we explore how dance, a 3D art form, can be used to interpret, animate and tell the stories of a painting and a space here at the Gallery. Now we've worked with Tony Adigan, a choreographer from East London on this project, and I chose him because he's a brilliant storyteller. He creates dance which really emotionally connects with audiences and he choreographs across a really exciting fusion of dance styles from hip hop to contemporary. So that's quite enough for me. I'm going to hand you over now to Emily, our curator, and Tony, our choreographer, so they can tell you more about the artworks and the process of creating the dance. Hello, I'm Emily Burns, Fifth Mile Curatorial Fellow at the National Gallery. We're here in room 34 in front of Joseph Wright of Derby's painting, An Experiment on a Bird in the Air Pump of 1768. It's a focus of a dance video choreographed by Tony. Hi, Tony. Hi, Emily. How are you doing? Well, thanks. Hi, guys. My name is Tony Adigan. I'm a choreographer from East London. Um, I'm working on this really exciting project with the National Gallery, working with VR 180. And I've been here looking for some sources of inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is behind us here, this painting. Emily, could you give me a bit more insight into this painting and what's actually, what's actually happening? What am I seeing? Sure. Um, so we're witnessing an experiment um, done mm -hmm. by this probably touring lecturer who's come to a domestic setting, probably a house to a family who've invited friends, um, to observe him demonstrate how when you take air out of a space and create a vacuum, um, this bird can therefore not breathe anymore and will die. You can't show that, dem you can't demonstrate that if you don't have the bird in the vacuum because you can't see a vacuum, it's invisible. Mm -hmm. So it's a dramatic way of right, proving okay. quite sort of simple science of pumping air out of a space. Um, and um, it's actually super interesting because um, it's a very contemporary um, happening. You know, mm -hmm. it was during the Enlightenment, there was a great interest in science and progress, time of the Industrial, uh, industrial Revolution, so industry. Mm -hmm. um, There's just lots of curiosity about these sorts of things. And so rather than doing a painting of a historic subject or a religious subject, mm -hmm. he's made something grand out of a scientific experiment. Right, right. And it's appropriate okay. that you're doing a, um, a contemporary dance response to this because this would have been super cutting edge in its day. Um, and talking about cutting edge, <laughs> um, uh, what, so why did you pick this picture for your? Um, well, I think so, there was something special about it, something stood out for me anyway, um, walking around in, in the gallery space, um, probably in terms of the amount of people that are in the painting mm -hmm. as well, and a different take on what's going on. Um, when I first looked at it, I was, my first thing was like, okay, what's actually happening here? Um, and yeah. what am I seeing? And I guess the main character, I call him the, the commander, shall we say, um, really stood out in terms of how he's inviting or trying to provoke us to, into the, into the mm. space itself. Mm, yeah, um, so there's something about gaze, yeah, I think. Um, sure. I like the idea of what they're actually watching, who's actually watching and why they're actually watching and who's not watching, yeah, actually. Absolutely. Who's not watching, exactly. Um, because we're, we're invited into this space right now. There's a space at the table that's left for us. Mm -hmm. And even um, the, the lecturer is pointing at us with his hand and giving us quite a challenging look, um, as if to say, you know, you join the table, you watch. I dare you to see this happen. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and what is your response going to be? Right, okay. um, you know, are you going to be like these really scared girls um, being reassured by, with one hand by their father, mm -hmm. but with the other hand being told, no, you must watch, this is life. You um, must learn. <laughs> exactly. Or are you going to be like this couple over here mm -hmm. who okay. are not, they're in love, aren't they? They're not looking at, um, at, at the experiment at all. They're not interested. Mm -hmm. Seems like they're totally in their own world, exactly. away from everyone else. Sort of paired up in the corner. I have a question. Okay. Light. Light. Light, light, yes. light, light, light. Um, is, where's the light coming from? I think when I was looking at the painting, it was, I was quite curious about how light's been used and also where it's coming from um, yeah. in terms of sources, yeah. um, being at the window and yeah. also coming from the table. Yeah. <sighs> Help me out here. So um, it's clear that there's two different types of light in this picture. Um, the first is candlelight, which we can see going through this sort of watery vitrine, which seems to have some sort of interesting specimen in. Um, it's, um, scholars sort of disagree. It might be a brain, it might be a skull it decomposing, or it might be a lung, which would be appropriate to the theme of 
breathing life and, death, um, yeah. and you know and of life and death um, and that is um, sort of shining out on the people surrounding us um, and, and of course we're casting shadows across the room so it really sort of brings you into the mm -hmm. scene so that's a very mm -hmm. clever device um, and also appropriate because uh, Joseph Wright of Derby loved painting um, light effects. He was very talented, obviously, in painting them. Mm -hmm. This is the largest and most ambitious one of what he right, called okay. his candlelight pictures. Um, but then we have another type of light. We have the moonlight up here, um, sort of the cold, steely, silvery light <laughs> that's being cast through onto this man especially. Um, and that might possibly also have another level of meaning in that Joseph Wright of Derby was a member of lots of sort of circles of intellectuals. Mm -hmm. um, one of the societies he was a member of was the Lunar Society. Okay. Um, possibly right. this man might be a portrait of one of those people. Um, mm -hmm. um, or, and the, he also knew lots of um, Freemasons, so one of their symbols was a moon. Right. Okay. So there's lots of, lots of levels of meaning of and interpretation going on. Yeah. going on. Okay, amazing. Yeah. And the young fellow by, by the window himself, I, I, we thought maybe he was trying to, to, to hide the light, maybe yeah. bring the blinds down. This might be a private, yeah. private scenario. Um, his face, his facial features and the way he's, his mouth is gives us some sort of like, I don't know, some kind of question in terms of what his part is to play yes, in this. Absolutely. Um, he, he sort of, he looks like he's in on the secret. We know that this man certainly knows what he's going to do. Um, he's sort of temptingly holding the top, the stopper, and you think, is he going to let the air out at the last second and mm. let this poor white cockatoo, quite expensive, don't want to kill this bird, out <laughs> mm -hmm. into that cage? where this boy is possibly either pulling up or pulling down, depending on the outcome. Mm -hmm. um, or is he going to keep it stoppered and the bird is going to die and we are going to see the reality and the harshness of life, um, mm -hmm. in which case, you know, the bird will not return to the cage. Right. Okay. So there's a dialogue going on here and the mm -hmm. different gazes around the room sort of lead you through the story. Mm -hmm. um, but really it's about life and death and sort of memento mori vanitas which yeah. is a really um, major uh, theme in mm -hmm. history of art so he's also referring back to other historical um, pieces of pieces. artwork amazing yeah it's a lot of information yeah there. so what, information. What, what's your what are you going to take away from this into your dance um, are you inspired by anything particular yep yeah, definitely the last point you made about um, life and death i think mm. that's quite uh, important to take that into the room um, from speaking to some of the dancers that i've been working with we all have our different opinion of what's actually going on. Yeah. And I think for every character in, in the painting, there's probably three different opinions of what's going on in that, in that thought process. So that as well has been interesting to have a conversation about. Um, yeah. And also just, as I said, the commander, the lecturer, as you said, mm. for me, he's quite a pivotal point um, mm, and absolutely. his relationship with the bird. Um, in terms of being in charge, being in control of yes. life and death scenario. He's playing God. Definitely, definitely. There's yeah. an element of playing God there. So for me, Science in the studio, God. I think I'll be playing with him as a main character and his yeah. narrative, but also the different narratives from everybody that's in, in the painting around him as well. And almost like a, yeah. he's almost, could be, you could say he's doing a duet with everyone in the, in the painting, as it were. Oh, um, nice. Which <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is, this is me speaking yeah, as well. It's little, it, yeah. yeah, but don't hold me to that. Don't hold me to and that. Then, and then the second um, um, dance video mm -hmm. is going to be held in the portico space. Yes. Um, which um, is, um, it has mosaics by Boris. Um, Mr. Anrep. Anrep, yeah, that's Anrep. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they're showing personifications of different mm -hmm. virtues and different labors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> what, what inspired you to take that space for your mm. next dance? I think the space in general is, is quite an epic, um, opulent space. And for me, it was, I guess, the challenge to try and like, match that, yeah. that atmosphere um, with movement and with choosing the right amount of dancers and the right dance in terms of their movement as well. Um, so strength is yeah. very important in terms of the dancers that I hope to be using there in terms of showing elements of strong strength yeah. um, and delicate strength, yeah. um, just in terms of the area as well. Yeah. It's quite a strong robust space with different levels. Um, also, for me, Anne Rep's uh, uh, mosaics on Absolutely, the floor yeah. and, and the words that are depicted, I think, um, Defiance. Defiance um, is, who's that? Uh, that is Mr. Churchill. Mr. Winston Churchill. Mr. Winston Churchill, Mr. Churchill with his sidekick of the demon, I think, yep. behind him. Yep. Um, so and Margot Fontaine, Margot the dancer, Fontaine. is Delectation. Delectation. Yep. Um, Greta Garbo, I'm not sure which one she is. Not sure. Constance. Constance, we'll, yes. don't, don't, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. <laughs> but I think um, just, I guess, Boris and Rep's idea of 
being more contemporary in that space and the way he challenged, challenged what was expected to be in that space. I think I'm taking mm. that element, mm. that small part, um, and kind of blowing up and really taking that in terms of my presentation, in terms of what's expected yep. to be in space and how I might challenge that with the movement quality. Um, so I'm really looking forward to working on, on both of them. Um, hopefully both of them will be different from each other, um, but really will take inspiration yeah. from the painting and also the portico space as well. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing the dancers. I'm looking forward to getting to the studio. Uh, <laughs> check out the next video, guys. Coming up.